Let me bang you. I do bang. let you bang. Hey, let me bang you, Jamie, man. I let you bang. I let you bang. I let you bang. Greetings, Mary's and Virgins. Go for Jesus. No for gay Jesus, people. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfucker. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. What's up, people? Welcome to a brand new MMA Roasted podcast. I'm here with the best comedian I know and the best comedy <laughs> I know. Greg Wilson is here. Um, you are uh nah, nah it's all good man i just got back from vegas i did a uh 14 shows in las vegas which is that's the thing about that laugh factory gig as much as i want that gig i don't know if i could do 14 shows and they're how long is it a full 45 minute headliner set or is it a vegas 35 minute headliner set it's a, it's a vegas 35 and they go like and you have to get off like it's they have right to, like because it's all union so you yeah can't. so like my last show some lady was like some lady in the crowd was, was a, a black couple and they were they were pretty drunk, I think. And then I'm like, OK, guys, that's my time. She goes, no, you owe us 10 more minutes. I was like, what? She's like, yeah. She's like, because she came late. She's like, I want you to do more 10 more minutes on stage. And then everyone's like, yeah, 10 more minutes. And I'm like, I it's like flattering, but no. Yeah, yeah. I, I go. Trust me, my wife wants the same thing. You know, like I, I tried to make hey! it. You're the fastest, man. You're so fast. I tried to make it funny, but it was like, but I couldn't go. And then the, then the people thanked me because like they would have been totally fucked if I don't want 10 more minutes. You sure. Know? No, it screws yeah. everything up. You're right. That It's very different. There is an agenda and you're how hard you're rocking or how much more time you want to do means nothing to that situation. It's like you got to go, especially and sometimes they had a guest spot. And it's like, okay, I guess I'm only doing 30 minutes now, you know? Like, I mean, that usually comes out of our time. It doesn't come out of the features time. It doesn't come out of the opener time. It comes out of our time. Yeah. The worst one, someone's like, I'll never hear from people, ever. I'll never hear from And all of a sudden, they're like, hey, I see you're going to be in uh, Wyoming tomorrow. Mind if I do a guest set? And I'm like, oh, you know? So, and especially if I don't even know the comic that well or something. And then they go on and they don't even stay for your set. They go, oh, I got to go. Oh, oh, my God. That's the worst. That ranks right up there with where they're like, hey, can I go first? Because I got to go do another thing. And then you're like, fine. And then they go first and they just hang out the rest of the night. It's like, I thought you said you had to go, motherfucker. You yeah. know, th that happens so often in our business. It's unreal. No, comics can be the worst. So I had a, some, so then, uh, what else? then I had to I drive four hours back with my wife and daughter. And my daughter is in the back seat. And a, I, the iPad like ran out of juice. We didn't have a charger, so Eesh. every so everything was like, "Daddy, why is it called?" Uh, I, I'm like, "Did you eat the chocolate?" She's talking to her face. I'm like, "You're guilty. Why is it called guilty? Uh, it means that you did something that you you're busted." And but why? Well, sometimes people go to court. But why do they go? And then this like, and she just the entire time is why why? And I don't want to like curb her enthusiasm or be like, no more questions. Cause I want right. her want to know questions, but it's just like, everything is, everything is why every it's that, that's the way it is. I mean, and I've seen this and of course it's, it's, it, it, it however annoying it may be now it's adorable because it doesn't last forever. Yeah. You know, there's going to be a time in a few years where she doesn't ask that anymore, you know, and you're going to almost miss it. But I've okay. seen the look on dad's face. Going, well, why? Well, why? I was just at the airport and this poor guy had, he had three kids. And I guess he was in charge of getting these kids to wherever he was going. And the kids said, well, my dad. And he was like, because it's just, that's the way it is. Like, he just no. fucking snapped. I was like, I get it, dude. This is probably the 3,000th why. And it's early. It was early in the morning. Like you could tell it was just, it had already, they, these kids have already worked his last nerve. But that does end. I mean, at a certain point, they grow out of that. And then you're like, I remember we used to always ask me why, you know. And I seriously wanted to pull over to the side of the road and just start running. <laughs> <laughs> just start running down, up the mountain, down the mountain. I just wanted to take off. I, I, I really I, I really wanted to just go. And then my wife's like, she hates my music. So she's like, she wants to put on Ariana Grande or some shit. Or she's like, can we, oh, hear, gosh. Can we hear my church service? I'm just like, I, I seriously want to just, just start taking off running. Uh, but then my daughter was funny, I guess, 
Because she's like, Daddy, I wrote a joke. I'm like, what's your joke? She goes, what's a cat's favorite color? I said, what? She said, perfect, right? So I was like thrilled. That's actually- Favorite color? I meant purple. Purple. I fu- Thank I you. Fu- I was like, Pur- like, yeah, yeah, yeah. purple, right, right, right. So I was, so then we were all telling jokes in the car, right? Like, but then I have like a million jokes. I'm just making them up. And, and Violet, you know, half of them aren't jokes. Most of them aren't jokes, but they're like, you know, why did the cow go into the closet? Because he wanted to, you know, just <laughs> kind of alternative <laughs> jokes, you know? And, and then, so then Brie, starts Googling kids jokes. Like my wife's out of jokes. She starts like Google. And then I'm like, no, that, that's cheating. You got to make them up. So then she starts rattling off kids jokes. And my daughter goes, still not laughing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no good deed goes unpunished. Well, man. Uh, no uh, good deed goes unpunished. No that, no, that was great. And then, um, and then every person we met in the elevator, my, my Violet's like, Hey, what are you guys doing in Vegas? Because she heard me ask. ask right, 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 right. Talk. So she thinks that's the thing to ask. Makes sense. And then she goes, my dad's a comedian and we get free food. <laughs> 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 I was like, you might not want to. Yeah, then- let's not yell that kid. Let's not uh, advertise that. I, you Now you got to step up and be like, I was going to pay the money, by the way. I also get money for these shows. So <laughs> it's not all the free food. In fact, free food's a very small part of it. And I also smell, anyways, no listener. She was she was killing me. When we went to like, I took her to the the Discovery Museum three times, Science Museum. I took her to this place called Wally Wombats. I took her to this other place called Kangamoo's. All the kids' places, and um, she she so she has like this like unicorn. She's like, this is my pet unicorn. So it's his birthday today. So I go, all right, happy birthday to her fake unicorn, and the, you know to her little doll. And then she goes, sorry, he's not much of a talker. <laughs> like, like she's, she's fucking killing me uh, like like dude she's got a lot of you in her oh man oy, and, oy, oy. Uh, th- yeah then i started laughing and then oh then, then and then then people are calling up to my daughter and being like hey you have really beautiful eyes and she goes i know i i go, I go violet we we say thank you yeah like, yes. right we don't exactly say, just say thank you that's all you gotta say yeah um, and then, but then, then we were at this thing where they had like the kids could like dress up as pirates and stuff. So of course, this little girl hits my daughter with a sword, right? Not like a real sword, like a like a fluffy sword, but it still was like not appropriate, right? Yeah. Uh, so then I'm like, I'm like Violet, you know, because she hit her in the head with it, and I'm like, I, I go Violet, you know, I'm proud of you for not hitting the girl back. And she goes, Well, I didn't have a sword. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, Yeah. You knew not to bring her hands to a sword fight. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's McCorkle. There, there he is. Um, but it was funny though, because like my daughter's, my my wife's, her back is so bad, right? So I'm always popping my wife's back, and and then my daughter usually helps. You know, she either watches or she helps. And she um, cheers, she cheers, she corrects, critiques. Yeah. So like, cut to like, uh, it was like Christmas, and we were at my wife's family and her 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 mom or grandma, my, my kids' great grandma, grandpa. She gets a Barbie and Ken. And she lays down Barbie flat. Oh boy. Oh and then boy. she goes, This is daddy. And then she just goes, oh. uh, uh, uh. <laughs> like, Yeah, I, I don't think I would put her in any sort of uh childhood counseling or anything. You're gonna you're gonna have some questions to answer. Yeah, after. you're gonna have some things to answer for, unfortunately. So <laughs> um, how was your weekend, Greg? What are you doing by it the was, way? It was uh I am filling out okay, so Fuck the post office. Whoever this fucking guy is, you know, the guy that Trump put in charge, I actually liked him because he came from like an efficiency background and a lot of things he said needed to be done. I agreed with, I was like, yeah, this is shit. Hate him if you want, but this is shit that does need to be done to, to improve the postal service. Totally agreed with us. But he really, there's some parts where he really fucked up because like I, I put in a change of address last year when I moved you know, tax documents forwarded. This year, the thing, the order expired. So instead of just delivering them to my old address where I have a neighbor would have collected them and just told me, hey, come pick these up. They instead marked everything return to sender. Uh, so they returned rather than, than because it expired, rather than just deliver them, they returned all of my tax documents. 
And so I'm now trying to track down, and you know, we're actors. I have like 14 to 16 different employers per year that yeah. send me W-2s, not to mention all the 1099s from all the Codman clubs. Now you're looking at another 30 documents. So, I mean, it, 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 and I got maybe a third that had my current address, you know? And so, I mean, so now I'm having to track down all of them. So right now I'm sending this new release to this talent change of address request to NBC Universal because I have two different fucking accounts of them. Even though I did shows for them here in Los Angeles, they should have my current addresses. They were sending everything to fucking Brooklyn. So, I mean, I it's just been this huge thing. So can it's like I'm trying to- right? Can you get an extension on it? Yeah, I'll have to do an extension so I can track down all the documents. It's a huge pain in the ass though. So that's what I'm doing right now because I'm just trying to get this off my desk so I can move on with my life. And I'm done right now and set. There we go. All done. Sorry. Perfect. And Sean, how are you? You have been like me. I opted out of paying taxes years ago. So I just don't, uh, I don't usually file and they don't usually ask. So it works out. Um, yeah, that always goes so great. It worked out great for uh, that guy that played Blade. He, or he, a lot of guys. <laughs> Wesley Snipe. No, Wesley I, Snipes, I they'll tell you all about it. Yeah, Blade don't okay, Greg, I know what happened in your situation because you know, I was doing the same thing arguing with my insurance company. They probably just naturally assumed that you moved to Austin like all the other uh, comedians suckling at the Rogan T trying to get on his show. Like, hey, maybe I'll just move to Austin. You can have me on your show sometime. Like, can you imagine the pressure he's under? Everyone he knows, hey, maybe I'll just move with you. You know, like, or whatever. Like, it just, unbelievable. Yeah, I think he pretty much opened up a comedy club just for that. Did uh, he ever open it, though? For what I understand, he still hasn't opened this Joe opened, Rogan club. I'm pretty sure it opened last week. Um, so I think he opened it. Okay. He didn't have Shab as his first act. Speaking of, did you guys uh, did you guys see the Arnold Schwarzenegger today? He said uh, I had a our Schwarzen African American. I'm sorry. Um, he uh, he said today uh, that Nazis are losers. Like that was the headline. He says Nazis are losers. And I thought, man, what a brave statement to make. Like I want to come out. He inspired me. Like I put on Twitter, I'm not a fan of school shootings. Like 75 percent of them at least are unnecessary. You know what I mean? Like it, it really took some balls to come out and say. Um, uh, Nazis are losers, guys. Like, God, man, that's a uh, risk in his career, you know? Yeah, way to, way to take it. Well, he is Austrian, but way to take a stand now, you know? Right. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> why? Right. Why, the, why right. did that become a statement he felt the need to make now? This makes up. Was he in Austria and was like, by the way, yeah. I feel it. Make it clear. With, not, when I was, not down with the Nazis. I know I look like one, I sound like one, and all my bloodline were one, but... I'm well, wasn't, cool. his, wasn't his dad a Nazi or something? Didn't, I think something like that. Yeah, yeah. By the way, Greg, I met the girl. I'm, I'm friends with the girl whose face you rubbed in her tits. Uh, your face rubbed in her tits. Uh, at, at, like, your Dirty at 1230 show. Oh, yes. The, she's like a porn girl, right? Yeah, she's a porn girl. But so, yeah. anyway, so, so this girl comes to my uh, show. Wait a minute. Let me be clear. I poured liquor down her tit into my mouth. Just to be clear. Okay? It wasn't like I just, uh, no. I very, she, she released the breast to me. And I gently poured alcohol down it and into my mouth. That is what's happened. And that's the story that's going around, by the way. That's how it gets interpreted. Just so you know, when that happens, I, you know, every, nobody says you rubbed your face in her tits. <laughs> everyone that relays that story says it exactly the way. They were smart. Delicate. They would have been rubbing alcohol. Yeah, they were very delicate and they're sure to make sure that you understand yes. that it was just pouring liquor down her tit. And now if her tit fell in my mouth after that, listen, I, I don't remember. There were a lot of things happening. A lot of moving parts. A lot of moving parts. Happened. So, Sean, this girl's like 20. Two twenty three. She's very hot, and her husband is like got to be in his fifties or sixties. He's like a yeah. Italian guy, and yeah. I guess he he films her getting like plowed like by like black dudes and like anally like he like they make OnlyFans or something. I don't like she's right. like, <laughs> and like he doesn't seem to. So he's. I got to be honest. Like, you're making me wish I'd gone hot tubbing with them now. <laughs> Because they did invite Leah. me, they did. They did invite me to go hot tubbing, and I was like, I don't think my wife would want me to go hot tubbing. No, Chris no. won't watch it because he said he's not into mature porn. So he was like, no, no. Oh, Chris D'Elia. Oh, Chris D'Elia. So, um, so this guy, so yeah, so Sean, this couple, like, they're into some weird stuff. It's like his third marriage. He just said, fuck it, went with his young. And she, they're really nice, like, like incredibly nice. But she comes to my show and I'm like, something's different about you. She's like, yeah, I got my tits done. I go, oh, she's like, want to feel them? And I was like, Yes, of course. I thank you, thank you. But, but she's but, very, she's very comfortable with her body. 
but but no, I'm not gonna just feel like I mean that well, how come when I was single, I was never want to feel my tits. That was never that never ever happened, ever, right? So she told me that like she had done a, oh, so she comes with this like Indian porn star who's a grandma, like from India, right? She's like okay. a straight uh <laughs> <laughs> so she's and and then some I other, just went from midnight to six. And then Katie Morgan, right, who used to host Real Sex back in the day, she was like naked. She's super hot with her husband. She is. Evan, she's very hot, very cool, very funny gal. Evan Stone, and then some other girl who told me that her her vagina uh, has is like gorilla grip. She has a gorilla grip pussy. Uh, this, these are her words, right? So <laughs> they come to the show, and I'm talking to them afterwards. And the gorilla grip girl, I'm like, so what's been new in your world? She's like, well, I did a wrestling match against this guy and uh, for Ultimate Surrender, where the winner fucks the loser. Mm, yeah, I'm but a fan. Because, because it was a draw, she won, right? And she told me that- Wait, t- 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 time out. No! Does a staged porn fight wind up in a draw? I mean, I understand. I, if Jake Paul were involved, I would understand. James Crowd was probably involved, is my guess. Oh my God. How did this happen? Okay. So it was a draw. So it was a draw. Uh, so, but then he said, I go, did you did you like peg him? You know, that's the thing now with like a strap on. She said, No, uh, we did it Amazon style. That's the new thing, Amazon style. So I go, What what what's Amazon style? Thank you. And wait a minute, I got they deliver within four days. But it's free, and you can't find it when it gets there, and you have to complain. Then they send a new one. Is that and it? They only make money on the shipping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no it's, different. it's the actual like I get. I don't know why they got Amazon. So basically, the guy gets down and he spreads his legs, right? So he spreads his leg like the girl, and then he, he, on he, his back. Yeah, on his back, and he just sits there while the girl just goes just pounds him, basically. Um, so I was. Like, I don't think that's new. <laughs> it doesn't sound. It doesn't wait, sound wait, is that a, I, I was going to say, is, is she riding his? Is she riding his joystick, or is it? Is it yeah, but is he's she pegging there with him? his legs in the air, like his legs are, are like like a V, and rather than like her legs. Okay, he's sitting down. Her legs are like a V, and she's pounding him. So he's just sitting there with a boner, right? Basically. So wow. instead of his legs being like folded under, like they're just out. Yeah. Right. Right. So does the older lady sit Indian style? <laughs> Much like most things on Amazon, I'm not impressed. <laughs> but then the girl, Katie's like, oh, I hate that because all you because you whiff man ass. She said you get man ass to smell. And then after that, I just left. I said, I, I got to go. But I couldn't wait to tell you guys about this because uh, I, I wanted to get your I, I, It just it really I feel like that wasn't the end of the story. I feel like it ends here for the podcast. <laughs> but I just I just. Feel like there's a couple sentences that got chopped off, you know, and I really, I don't, you know, I don't know what's making me feel that way, but something about this. I do want to verify, and I, this is an honest question, so don't blame me. But the guy who has his wife sleep with black guys says that her vagina is gorilla grip. No, no, a different girl. Not okay, because I was gonna say that could be offensive if he were to say that to an African American man. Oh no, you got to try it. It's gorilla grip. Grip. He'd be like, okay. Thanks. These are different people. These are different. These okay. are different people. All right. It's, it's hard to believe there's that many crazy people in LA. Like, well, it's this is Vegas. This is Vegas. Bro. Oh, it's even worse. Yeah, even worse. So, and then I, I saw your friend that I sat you next to that was a porn star, but like Wait, the, the, guy, porn. Yeah, the porn character actor. He wasn't necessarily a star. He's, yeah, yeah, he's a like, porn character actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he never made it to a star. Uh, so I got some more. Stories. He's the guy in the cuck video sitting like this. <laughs> <laughs> the only character he plays, it's odd. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't actually get to do the fucking. He's the other guy. So we'll get back to this, but let's get talk about the the fights that went on over the weekend. John Jones, I said this was going to happen. I told everyone, I said first round he's going to take him down and submit him. Everyone I told, except for myself, when I made the bet because <laughs> I didn't realize in uh, the at the Tropicana, you know, I I did win. I, I won like you know fifty bucks. I, I said John Jones by submission. It was twenty to win, you know, seventy. So I made ninety dollars, whatever it was. But if I would have bet first round, you could bet. At yeah, the- sure. Absolutely. Yeah. It was like 20 to one or 30 to one, which I would have made some some I mean, better money. Um, and I knew this was going to happen. I just I had a feeling that this guy, 
you know, it's guy with many weapons versus guy with one weapon. The guy with many weapons is going to win, especially when that many weapon is wrestling. And this other dude from France is a kickboxer. And I like the fact everyone was goofing on John Jones training partner because he brought in, you know, Walt Harris and he brought in Maurice Green and he he brought in the other guy. And they're like, oh, well, you know, some of those guys have got cup of the UFC. What kind of dream team? Yeah, but these guys are 280, 290. Like they're huge. They're, they're huge guys that fight at heavyweight. And that's the guys you want to train with when you're fighting at heavyweight. Uh, Sean, what do you think? Uh, man, I don't know. I was, it's funny. My nephew hit me up for betting advice, and I told him to do a parlay, John Jones and um, what's his name, the Bo Nickel guy. Yeah. Um, I said, just yeah. parlay those two, and if you can get anywhere close to even odds, you know, like that'd be good. And then after five minutes later, I said, oh, by the way, bet both of them in the first round. And he said, well, that would have been great to know because it's, you know what I mean, or whatever, the Bo Nickel fight had already happened. You know, I said, I meant to say both of them. I guess that would have astronomically made the odds go through the roof because I figured they would both. I knew Bo Nickel would win the first round. I thought if John Jones won, it'd probably be in the first round because I thought he'd either be able to take him down or not, you know. So, um, but I figured he probably would. But it, uh, John Jones, I think um, he like sold his soul to the devil. I actually hit Monty Cox up last night. And I don't know if you remember Monty. He managed a bunch of the chance for years. I said, dude, what is it about John Jones? Like, you have to tell me because I just don't, I don't, I mean, I understand it, but I kind of, I mean, to go in there and beat somebody in a minute and a half like that. Yeah. And uh, he called me right before this started. So I was like, I can't talk right now. I'm going to have to hit him back later. But uh, he was going to explain it to me. But it's uh, he's something else. I did notice real quick. All the, Did you see all the sponsors on the cage? No. Yeah. Dude, it was, you know, they, they said that they weren't allowed to have sponsors on their shorts because it was distracting on their shorts and shirts and walk the cage. I'm like, oh, I'm glad they all moved to the cage so the UFC could get paid. <laughs> but I seriously was sitting there and I told my buddy, I said, dude, there's more sponsors on that cage than there were at John Jones last AA meeting. Like for real. Was, uh, <laughs> no, it was, it was insane. Every injury it was covered. No, yeah, it, it, that's true. But I mean, uh, come on. It's obvious. They don't want the fighters to make the money. They want to make the money. Right. They, fighters they, get what, oh, they want the fighters they, to get what they paid, and that's it. The Not old right. days when they negotiate their contract, they told you we don't pay very much, but you can make more in sponsors. That's how they got you to sign it. You know right. what I mean? And now it's now we're taking away your sponsors. So it's like now, now, Greg, right. you picked Cyril Gone. Were you surprised? Yes. Were you surprised? I was very surprised. Listen, the guy, okay. I really felt like he'd been working. What has he been working on? What were you working on, Daryl? What did you think was going to happen? He even told you his whole thing. I think the whole time, especially since the Ngannou fight, was he been working on his wrestling and his takeover? Apparently, he didn't work on it. Apparently, he thought his power would be enough and that he wouldn't be able to take him down. And they did not prove to be true. And uh, I mean, it was so by the numbers exactly what John Jones wanted to happen. I'm like, Cyril, he's this, he's one of those guys. And the heavyweight division, I think, is more prone to this than any other division where guys skyrocket up the, up the yeah. division, right? They get all the way to the top and then they finally reach guys with real skills. And then they fucking, and instead of improving, they're just like, but it worked before. And then, they, I mean, we saw this out of, what's his name? The the uh, the guy that was a, the the a WWE fighter, the Brock, the Bro Brock Lesnar. Same yeah. thing, incredible power, skyrockets all the way to the top. Then he gets up against some guys with real skills, and he ends up fucking, ah! and same, same thing with uh, Rosenstreak. It's kind of yeah, like, the, and yeah. and this guy, and Gon's another one. This meteoric rise, right up the range, beats everybody's ass, looks like he has, and I'm like, okay, he's got to be working on his ground game and his submission and his takedown defense and everything, and apparently he didn't. And he was just counting on his strength to be able to save him. And it was fucking garbage. This was one of those cards. I will say this. It's weird the way some cards I got, a vi I really can see it. I'm like, and I pick, you know, like five out of six, yeah. four out of five. I, and I have a great run. In. This card, I was wrong about almost everything. Well, I uh, missed on everything with the exception of the Alexa Grasso fight. I did put, luckily I threw some money on her because she was plus 550. And I'm like, this feels like one of those ones, like maybe. And sure enough, when she pulled it out, I was like, thank God. Made some of that money back. Well, when uh, Cyril Gahn said, I only train in my camp. He goes, I don't train in the off season. I don't train when I'm not in, in camp. And I'm, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're fighting the greatest of all time. Um, yeah, but he has, how is that not true for John Jones? He's taken four years off. I mean, come on. That isn't that John different. Jones is I mean, one of those guys. I mean, he's, a, he's look, he's all, you, you can't get to where he is without working hard. But when you have two brothers, when you have three brothers and two are in the NFL – and one yeah. of the greatest and superstars in the NFL. Fighter. And yeah, I mean, you obviously have more natural ability than almost anybody. And it's just yeah. a matter of whether it's up to you if you're going to take advantage of it. Um, Honestly, I want their dad to impregnate me. 
Give me one of give me one of these superhumans, man. I I could, I could use the retirement plan. Jesus. Now it's unreal. Now when he called out Stepe and today he's or in the press conference, first he called Ngano a pussy because Ngano said, "Hey, I'm the real king of the heavyweight division, you know, but good job." And he goes, "You're a giant pussy." Right. Right. Which is which is why John Jones stayed away for three years when Ngannou was calling him out and kept saying, I want a hundred million dollars to fight him. And the minute it can't happen, and Stipe's 47, and he's like, All right, I want Stipe now, you know, whatever. That's the thing. It's like, look, I want Stipe to win. I like Stipe. He's a friend of mine. He you you can't pick like almost two more opposite careers. You got to go. We got one guy who's a fireman in his free time who like never gets in trouble. You've never heard one bad thing about this guy. Literally like when he's not the heavyweight champion, he's out saving people in fires. I mean, and then you got a guy who just, uh, we don't have to even go into John Jones, what, what John Jones, but you can't pick two more opposite people, but man, essentially one knows how to live his life. Uh, <laughs> and but, the other, he's trying to be a good game. And, and, but here's the but. The, where the but is like, is he going to catch Stipe when he's when he's kind of past his prime? He's been knocked out by Ngannou his last fight. He got knocked out by Daniel Cormier. Um, you know, or is this the kind of thing now where it goes to fucking John Jones' head and he takes his foot off the gas and he goes, you know, he goes really easy and he doesn't train nearly as hard and then he goes in there and gets caught by a hungry Stipe who like shows up and is focused and trains really hard. I mean, both are just as likely, I'm afraid. Son? Yeah, I think I mean, I think Stipe is definitely physically past his prime. I actually trained with him a couple of times. I got completely destroyed when we com- trained. Uh, like I was nowhere near any good still but when i trained with him i was shocked at uh he's not crazy strong but he's extremely um athletic like extremely athletic and very quick and very uh like on the ground very sneaky like he can do all kind of like does different stuff even jujitsu wise it's kind of sneaky so um i would love to see him win but i think man he's uh he's taken a beating for years he spars hard too man when they spar i hooked him up with a pro boxer here out in indianapolis who's one of the best i've never seen a guy can box like that um, when he was getting ready to fight Mark Hunt, I hooked him up, and uh, this guy was 10-0 and and just got burnt out and quit fighting, but he was, like, champion material, like, as a kid, you know, and um, he said Stipe shocked him with how good he was with the stand-up, you know, like, so, but it's, uh, I would like to see Stipe, but I think John Jones probably finds a way to beat him just by being seven or eight years younger, you know? Uh, you're probably right. I mean, he is old, and, you know, I mean, he... I, 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 I mean, that's, I mean, with all likelihood, that's how that goes down. I don't even know how you can make that, make any money on that fight with all the betting being heavily on John Jones. I think the real question is how much Coke did he do after that fight? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I almost think I hate to say it like a better, Two eight balls. a better fight is going to be Curtis Blades, John Jones, because there's a guy who's a little bit more, I mean, He's right there. He's. They've never you know, fought, right? No, no. John Jones is only fought one guy at heavyweight. Curtis, Curtis Blaze is a big guy. Oh, I thought Curtis Blaze at two or five. Yeah, you're right. Okay, yeah. So I mean, that also is, is a good fight uh, for John. Yeah, because Blaze can wrestle. He's not like John Jones. The thing I found interesting, um, Cormier was talking about it today, and he said that uh, Cormier was saying that um, at his best, he feels like he could beat John Jones sometimes. At his best. He knows he would beat Stipe every time, you know? So he said, like, he thinks that's the difference. He said uh, he wasn't nearly at his best against Stipe when he lost to him or when he beat him, but he said he at his best. He said he was at his absolute best both times, the second time, especially when he fought John Jones, and he said it still wasn't good enough. You know? He was winning the fight. I was there. I was at both yeah. of those fights. He was winning the fight going into the third round, and then he just got called the head kick, and it was it was over. Uh, now, Shevchenko. Can, wait a minute, can Ngannou come back? Or is that just a done deal? He's banished. He's not allowed. The They'll UFC, never make a deal with him again. Part of UFC, we're done with Ngannou, but I don't think that's the case. I think every, I think Ngannou is going to go and test him out, test out the waters and realize that Tyson Fury is not going to fight him with small gloves. Um, and yeah. the money isn't going to be where he thought it was at. The PFL is not going to pay him. Bellator can't afford him, I don't think. And I think he's going to go back and fight John Jones. I'm calling it super fight in December. December. I hope so. That's the only fight that I think makes any sense. That's worth watching that anybody will pay to see is the only guy left. The only guy that can, and and you know what? It'll be great for Ngannou because the UFC will finally have to give him the money that they want. And they finally have Jones in a position where he's got to fight him. 
He can't I, run from being like, no, 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 no. I like, still want to see to. He's got I the see if he can beat Steve Bay because I think he throws him in there over the summer sometime, just to get him beat, and then you know, then come back around to Francis. I want to see. I I don't know. I think Steve Bay's wrestling. He's a bigger guy. He fought heavyweights. I want to see what happens. I, I'm not. I'm not. You know. I want. I think Steve Bay can hang in there. Steve Bay has surprised people his entire career. Yeah. You know. I mean that his whole way up. People every time he was shocked. The, he shocked the world every time people bet against him. So I would. I would look to him to give him a hell of a fight. I don't know that he's gonna win. I don't. I wouldn't bet on it. But you know what? Steve Bay surprises me over and over again. He's just one of those guys. There's a few fighters that are like that, and Steve Bay is absolutely one of them. What's up, people? I got to talk to you about HelloFresh. First of all, what is HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get fresh farmed, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You got to skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Number one, all right? You can make mealtime easy with delicious recipes made with fresh, wholesome ingredients delivered to your door. No lines, no hassle, no gas, all that other stuff that you get to get there. No, just great tasting meals you can whip up and enjoy in the comfort of home. Sounds good to me. HelloFresh has 40 weekly recipes to choose from for all meal occasions, lifestyles, and preferences, okay? Take your pick from meals like soy glazed salmon with rice or mushroom and chive risotto. That sounds delicious. I'm in. Now, me and my wife, we've been doing home cook Hello Fresh, and it has been delicious, delicious. Okay, it saves us time, it saves us money. We're in. So just go to hellofresh.com/roasted60. Use the code roasted60 for sixty percent off plus free shipping. Okay, hellofresh.com/roasted60. All right, Hello Fresh, America's number one meal kit. Go check it out. What's up, people? I want you guys to know that Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from pro and college basketball, UFC, MMA, NHL, and more. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. They got live betting options, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. BetOnline is truly the fastest and easiest way to bet on your favorite leagues and events. So, people, head to their website today or use your mobile uh, device to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code CLNS50 to receive your rewards. That's right, CLNS50. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Highly recommend. Now, uh, Sean, were you surprised when Stipe lost uh, Stefan Struve? Uh, yeah, I think he got poked in the eye there I don't when he did it. But I never say that because I'm more or less the champion because I beat Mark Hunt, who beat Stefan Struve, who beat Stipe, who's considered the greatest. Uh, so I always people always tell me that. You're like the lineal champ. I'm like, yeah, but I also lost to Stefan Struve. So you can say the same uh, yeah. say the same thing. But no, that's uh, the MMA math doesn't work. But no, I was, I was actually very surprised when he uh, beat him. But I think looking back on it, if you watch it, he did get poked in the eye and didn't see the uh, next punch was coming. So... Um, no, a guy who was in four thousand interviews over the weekend, he was the he was the man of the hour on UFC Fight Pass. Don Fry, everybody, my whole Twitter, my whole Instagram feed is Don Fry quotes about the fights. <laughs> All right, he's just staring. Are you, doing, doing, guys? Guys? How are you all doing? Good, good, good to hear you, What's buddy. That? How the was legend. your trip? How was your trip how to Vegas? You? How was your trip to Vegas? Yep. Oh, man, I'm still recovering, man. Jeez, I didn't even drink, but I'm still recovering from the, the airline flight, you know? Crime and you know, we have to start riding my horse up there next time. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I saw you and Coleman. Coleman said you were his strongest opponent and toughest opponent. Coleman fought Fedor and, like, Randy, some big guy. I mean, was that a bit, was that a surprise he, he uh, said that to you? Hell no, it's not surprising. I'm Don fucking Fry. What's wrong with God you? damn no, right. even question something like that. <laughs> Good point. He's Good point. back. Now, what did you think of the John Jones fight? 
you know, partner, I did not see it. I left, you know, <laughs> um, we, we had a little mix up of the seating and, um, buddy of mine got, got a little pissed off. So, uh, he split. And so, you know, out of, out of, um, uh, dedication or out of, you know, uh, uh loyalty, Respect. you know, we yep. can, can you suit and I left too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's wait, a I thought they. I thought the UFC so flew you out. To see it. Wait, I thought the UFC flew you out, put you on fight pass. Yeah, they, yeah, they did. So uh, how come you didn't have the right seats? Yeah, they did, but they they. I don't know. There was a screw up with the seating, and um, you know that happens. Shit, that happens. I mean, come on, they got the Chinese involved in this shit now. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's gonna go smooth. Of course, obviously. <laughs> the Chinese people got the direct to- line. Oh, I've been between- waiting for someone to say it for weeks now. Totally. <laughs> There's <laughs> always a direct line between the seating snafus and the Chinese. Everybody <laughs> knows that. Come on, guys. Yeah, yeah, right. yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect together also. <laughs> now, did you at least watch the Shevchenko fight? No, I didn't even watch that. We left we left right before that. And I think I think after the first round of it we left. Now that was a, that was a crazy and, um, fight. That, that that was so back and forth. I mean, if she doesn't if she doesn't throw that spinning back kick and get her back taken, does she win that fight? Like was that cuz she won round 2 and 3 because of her wrestling. She got rocked in the first. So I'll give grass with the first. The fourth was I but before the I my my what do you think, Sean Greg? You got you think Shevchenko would have won if she hadn't thrown that kick? For yeah, sure. I, yeah, I think Grasso was absolutely waiting for that. I think she'd been training for that. I think she was waiting for the opportunity. She knew she would do some kind of some stuff like that because she likes to do that that martial arts stuff. I mean, she loves the the wild kicks, the question mark kick stuff like that. And I think she was waiting for the opportunity to to take her down right then. And it finally, pre- I mean, it presented itself earlier. She wasn't able to finish it. I think that was the one, and and she got her. I mean, that was it. She, I think she was a thousand percent counting on that to happen. I, I can't believe she turned her back on her opponent. It's like us, like you never do that, not even with the Chinese. Like you don't uh, turn <laughs> back on them, kind of like that. But if she had to do it over with again, no for real. <laughs> especially with the Chinese, especially right? if she had to do it over again, you know, they always say hindsight's 2020. But if she, well, hindsight's 2020, unless you're Bruce Buffer, then it's some sweaty Latin guy. Uh, that is. Hindsight. But um, that is like that. <laughs> hindsight being 2020, I don't think she would get so fancy when you're leading that that far into a fight, you know, like I, I actually told my uh, nephew to bet on that one too. I told him it's a sure thing. And he was like, Hey, thanks. Like as soon as she got <laughs> out, I was like, dude, of all the fights on there, that was the most sure one I thought. Yeah. 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 She was, she yeah. was, she was minus was 900. God. Yeah. I mean, Nine to on. one, nine fifty one. yeah. That was crazy. Um, and then, uh, the Jeff Neal fight was pretty damn awesome. Uh, he yeah. loved it off, but I mean, Jeff Neal came in four pounds over, he said his training camp, he had some fucked up shit going on. Dude, I told you the last podcast, I go, this guy must be about 220. When I, 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 he was huge and not fat. I don't even know how he makes 170, this dude. Uh, but it was a good fight. It was a, that, that was probably the fight of the night. Um, this dude, Romanov, how do you say, he's, this guy's no joke. Did you watch that fight? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a good fight. I was really happy with that, you know. And uh, with uh, the wrestler, uh, what the hell is the wrestler's name? Yeah, Bo Nickel. Bo Nickel. Bo Nickel. Yeah, Bo Nickel. Nick Bokel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he did a good job. I mean, it, it took him longer than what I thought. You know, I mean, maybe, maybe you just want to get used to the, the lights and the uh, surroundings or something. I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, I, I expect him to take that one, you know, Within ten seconds, shit. Now, I mean, he's now four and zero in the UFC. He's talking about being the pound for pound greatest of all time. He started. He 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 started with like a crazy kick that like almost fell on his ass, which was kind of funny. Um, but according to Henry Cejudo, this guy's got to slow down. He needs about five or six more fights before fighting anyone in the in the top ten. Sean, you agree? No, I think uh, I mean. 
I would throw him in the top 10 right away, but uh, I mean, they're going to have to put him in there with somebody with a little bit of wrestling. I think I text you guys, I dream of a day that Shemayev can't make 170 and has to fight Bo Nickel because he's not going to, he's going to get ragdolled by Bo Nickel instead of the other way around. You know, I'm dying for that to happen because Shemayev thinks he's unbeatable. You know, like he gets in there, somebody's going to wrestle him, it's going to be a problem. But um, the UFC is funny how they kind of, I mean, I wish they would have done that to me. I always made jokes. Uh, like I, I told Matt Mitchell, like, who was he sleeping with at the UFC that he got to fight Kimbo Slice? Then Joey Beltran, not the Beltran <laughs> guy, but Tim Hague. Like, I'm fighting Mark Hunt, Stephen Shrew, like my first two. And he's fighting the worst heavyweight in the UFC. The only terrible heavyweight in the UFC he didn't fight was me. So, like, that was the only <laughs> – that was, like, the only bad heavyweight he didn't get to. I, I would love to have been on that, uh, that schedule of his, I'll tell you that. I, I, I felt bad for Jamie Pickett. I thought, you know, I thought he'd answer the bell a little – I thought he'd last a little longer and take it into the third, you know. I mean, I just – I expected more from him. I really did. I figured he heard the noise. I was like, I'm nobody's stepping stone. I really just expected more. And Bo Nickel went out there and, and just really man and looked pretty, pretty. I, again, I was like, wow, I really, really missed, I whiffed on a lot of these this time. Well, he's so, protesting but, the stoppage, though. He said he got kicked in the balls, and that's what caused it. But I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't see that. I don't think the thing, man, I'll tell you the thing with those wrestlers like him at that level, the advantage he has, he can throw any kick, anything he wants. It doesn't matter because even if he ends up on his back, he's going to be right back on top. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter unless he's with an equal wrestler, but that's why he threw that kick and he went down at first. I was like, he's probably hoping the guy jumps on him so he can turn around and just, you know, sweep him and get back on top. It's that, uh, that easy when you're that good of a wrestler. I used to wrestle with Purdue's average heavyweight wrestlers and get destroyed let alone Tom Erickson, you know? So it was... Uh, and this is like, when you were 270, 280? What's that? This is when you were 280? Yeah, when I was at yeah, UFC in shape, man, like walking around 290, um, I would go up there with Purdue's wrestlers and under wrestling rules, I couldn't do anything with them. But if we were doing jiu-jitsu, I'd choke them out every time, you know? But we're just straight wrestling. I was trying to learn how to wrestle, so we just did straight wrestling rules. I couldn't, literally could do nothing but get taken down. Like, it was ridiculous. I'll tell you who I wow. felt bad for was Derek Bryce. Oh, man, he used to... Uh, go on, Don. Tom Erickson used to bounce me off the fucking wall. Tom <laughs> Erickson used to bounce me off the practice wall like a basketball. You know, <laughs> just, the guy's just a monster. Uh, Derek Brunson, man, because I he was my parlay. I bet Brunson, and then my first one was out. He was like doing great. He won his first round, and then he just got fucking him and Julia Marquez. I don't know if it was the pressure uh. or what. But both of them just gassed yeah. hard. I mean, obviously, he was also wrestling and throwing 100 punches. But, man, Derek Brunson was a guy, he was doing, like, hockey fights, going punch for punch. And then he was like, when I was doing that, I was winning half my fights. And then he adjusted, and he was just, like, wrestling. He started beating guys like Darren Till and all these guys. And he, he figured out a strategy. But I think he, he's gotten back to that, let me just trade punches with people. And unless you're Don Fry. That that doesn't seem to really work that well. Um, what did you think of the Derek Brunson fight, Don? Yeah, it didn't didn't always work for Don Fry either. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, I yeah, you know, I, I think you're right. Uh, they gotta they gotta slow down, reassess some stuff, and. Um, you know, you've got to stick with got, got to do the dance, but you've also got to increase your, your knowledge of the sport. You know, and the styles, and, and you've got to you've got to um, add add to yourself continuously. Add to add to your um, repertoire. Yeah, yeah. That Drakus Duplessis guy, he looked pretty good in that second round, man. He did. He looked, uh, he looked real good. I was like, okay. This, I mean, it was pretty severe. I liked him. And, and I had bet on him. I had actually picked him in my parlay, but I also took Araju, Araju, so that one was already dead. So, and then the uh, the the Ian Gary fight. I, you know, this kid's gonna be good from Ireland. He's like undefeated because he got dropped. I never saw a guy get dropped the way he did and go back and tell his corner exactly what went wrong. It was almost like he was cornering. <laughs> He was like, he got dropped, and he's like, here's what happened. If I just do this and stick to this thing, I'll win the fight. I'm like, he's telling his corner what he should do, which I thought was – I'm like, how much, how hard did he get hit where he thinks he's the corner man? But <laughs> fucking, Reminiscent of Apollo Creed. They're like, tell, they're like telling Apollo Creed, like, uh, everything, like, uh, 
You know what I mean? Like, hey, you can't stand there and trade with them. Like, don't tell him what to do. He always had another idea. Like, he was always, don't throw that towel in. Like, he's always got something else going on. I always <laughs> wonder, by the way, and Don and Sean, you could add to this. Like, sometimes when you're watching, because of the Apex fight, with the other corner screaming out what to do, are you hearing the other corner and then responding to, because he's always like, throw the right, you know, one, two, or, you know, five, six, or that jab's right there. Like, are you ever listening to the corner and then responding based on what you hear? I didn't. I, I I would just I could just hear my 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 guy Steve Owen. I could just hear his voice, you know, out of the whole crowd. But um, I know Ken Shamrocks. He he told told Steve and I. He said, "Yeah, halfway through, I quit listening to him. Started listening to you." <laughs> so, <laughs> he, he did that. Yeah, I, I my experience is a little different than Don's. I had many occasions where I fought in front of almost no people. So I was able to hear everything. On, <laughs> there were no fans. Um, but uh, I do remember several times hearing the other corner saying he's getting tired, like talking about me to his guy. And I'd be like, damn it, they can tell I'm tired. You know, like they'd be thinking like, I must be showing it. They'd be like, he's getting tired. Or like the time I told you guys when I heard Don Fry literally from two feet away say I look like I'm about to quit after the first time I got kicked. He goes, the world's like he's ready to quit. I was like, damn, Don, I'm we just started. <laughs> right one leg. I, I got to get picked at least three times before I'll quit. So, uh, so some, other stuff, <laughs> some other stuff that's going on, by the way, is uh, – oh, by the way, so uh, I, I didn't tell you. Um, uh, people that came to my show over the week, Walt Harris came. John Jones' whole team came. I was worried that John was going to come because I was hoping he would, so I would, like, apologize. But Walt Harris came and I'm like, Walt Harris is the most powerful heavyweight since Lizzo. You know, like I was, I made fun of him. And nice. then, and then what's his name came? The guy who knits, uh, the, uh, the, what's his, um, you know, the guy, his other training partner. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing Dominic Cruz. Knits. Talking <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was, yeah. The guy was on the <laughs> ultimate fighter and he was always drunk and knitting. Um, and he like, that's his like whole thing. Maurice Green, Mo Green came. That was that, that was pretty awesome. And then uh Jake Shields came to the fight. Meanwhile, Jake Shields is responsible for like, remember the whole on CBS, the mayhem brawl he got into? When, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you remember this, Greg, or if you were a fan back then, but basically it was on Sh Strike Force and Jake Shields beat Mayhem. So Mayhem, mm -hmm. so Jake won a fight for the championship, and Mayhem runs into the to the octagon and goes, "Where's my rematch, motherfucker?" While it's on CBS, and then the Diaz brothers, Gilbert Melendez and Jake Shields all jump Mayhem. So now there's like Jeez. now there's a hundred people fighting on TV, and the camera just goes, and then it's Gus Gus Johnson goes, "These things happen in MMA," and they were out of time. They just pan <laughs> out. And now the show's <laughs> over. So the show is over, and all you see are like the whole everyone's fighting. Like the, that was the and end. Then, right? And then Big Brother season premiere started. Like it really was like that. Like it just yeah. Went, like, last week on Big Brother, like it's somebody. Yeah, died. exactly. <laughs> Coming up next on sixty minutes. Yeah. It would have been great if, like, during the commercials, they went back to the brawl, like uh, the Big Brother yeah. commercial. Like, so, but then, right? So then, Jake Shields was responsible for basically, or not the the, the main culprit, but for getting CBS thrown off, MMA thrown off show, uh, CBS, right? And then he got into it with Greta Thunberg, you know. So Greta Thunberg and that that guy, what's his name? You know, what I'm talking about uh, Tate, the guy who's yeah. now. You know, what's his name? Andrew Tate. Yeah. They were going at it, right? They were fighting on Twitter. And then Jake Shields pops in and goes, why don't you guys fuck already, right? So then Andrew Tate writes, like, she's not ready for this D or something. And then oh, posts, right. posts a picture of him, like, uh, with, 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 like, a pizza, eating a pizza. Well, anyway, they find out where the where he is based on the address on the pizza. And then the Romanian fucking police come in, bust him, and he gets – now he's been in jail since then. And it's because of Jake Shields. So Jake Shields is now responsible for two <laughs> for fucking <laughs> terrible. I will tell you what, I've hung out with Jake Shields seven or eight separate times, and he introduces himself to me every time. He's he's like the nicest, and I'm like, dude, actually, one of the nicest guys. But yeah. yeah, I always tell him, I'm like, dude, how do you not remember me after the eighth time we've hung out? I don't mean just met, I mean like hang out for five or six hours. And he goes, Hey, Jake Shields, like shakes my hand. I'm like, Yeah, dude, I know. I remember you. Like, I, I don't know. What and how do you forget McCorkle after five <laughs> minutes, <laughs> yeah. let alone five hours? People have been him for five seconds and will uh, never forget this motherfucker. The last time I uh, talked to him, it was in L.A., and he was like, introduced himself. I said, dude, I don't even know if you're a kid anymore or not. 
But please tell me you don't, don't again not remember me. Like after the eighth time we've hung out. Like I don't dude, know. I met a guy who was like bragging about this porn star that like blew him. This whole fucking dude, this girl blew me. This girl blew me. And then one time she was at a party and I'm like, hey, what's up? And she had no idea who he was. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, but you know, I mean, you know. When you go through when you go through a hundred dicks a month, I mean, you know, it's hard, yeah, that, hard that to really keep track. You, yeah, do you really question that? <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> you, if she did remember you, that, that might not be the best thing. <laughs> that means either you're probably either right, really bad yeah. or really weird. You know, like oh, you're, you're the one with the hook at the top of your dick. <laughs> you're the one. That, you're the one with the pee, you're the one with the pee hole on the side. Okay, I remember you. Uh, like no, no, no. I don't want to be the arrows up the ass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be remembered. I want to be easily forgotten. So Rampage uh, said in a podcast, yeah, he, absolutely. he said he knows fighters take dives in MMA. Uh, I think him being one of them in the Fedor fight, but uh, <laughs> he basically said he knows that a lot of fighters take dives, um, or that there have been some fighters. Uh, Sean, do you agree? Uh, all I remember on that podcast, I got to show you guys this because I thought about it. Uh, I didn't hear him say that. I would say some of the pride days, there were probably a few of them, but uh, I do remember on that same podcast last weekend that Brendan Shaw said he reps 225 pounds for 40 reps, which I don't know if you guys know what that means, but that means like he would qualify in the top 10 NFL combine of all time if he could rep, rep like the strongest I ever was on every steroid known to man in 325 pounds. I could maybe do 30. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is Aaron Donald. If you guys know who that is. Yeah, sure. One of the greatest defensive men in the NFL. Ever, maybe yeah, the maybe, greatest. Maybe the best player in the NFL right now. One of the greatest defensive linemen of all time. Considered widely the best athlete, the strongest. Ran a 4'6", 40 at 290 pounds. He reps at 35 times. So uh, Shaw can do it five more times than him. He can serve the strongest man in the NFL. So I thought that was pretty interesting. But to answer your question, Brendan Shaw is a liar. <laughs> 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 but to answer your question about Rampage, Brendan Schaub is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, No, listen, and, and that's the thing, especially those anytime it's a sporting event and it's a smaller, you know, not necessarily smaller, but just not a, a globally watched kind of thing. I, I think there's always going to be an opportunity for, for the fix to be in. You know, I think any minor league, any anything that, and even in the major leagues, I mean, even in some of the biggest stuff, I mean, we hear about it, you know, decades later, it's like, oh, my God, I guess I'm, like that ref in the NBA that was on the on the oh. take for, for decades, you know, and, and shaving points off games and stuff. Oh, but so, he, he, never bet, he never bet on a game he ref, he said. I'm like, yeah. really? So you yeah. just... You bet on every other game, but none of the ones you were the ref in. That, that's where he drew the line. So. Exactly. Right. He's so, yeah, he's right. such, a, such a good person. So, uh, uh, he has such great scruples. So Mark, <laughs> Col Mark Coleman says he, he's coming back uh, to fight in celebrity boxing. Um, he has been training. <laughs> um, <laughs> and this is one of those leagues where some things might be in. You know what I mean? Like, that's... Uh, Celebrity boxing is one of those ones where if anyone's getting paid to take a dive, it's going to be in that one. I mean, Coleman, you see him hitting the bag. He looks good, but, I mean, he, he's up there in age. Uh, Don, are you going to be in his corner? I'm, I'm going to do it, too, except I'm going to fight in the women's division. So <laughs> I'm going to make sure I'm going to win. I'm not sure about I'm, that. I'm going I'm to secure the, the – <laughs> I, I hope you win, Don. If you were on here earlier, you could find out. You would have found out what can happen to you when you lose to a woman in some sort of uh, grappling or celebrity uh, wrestling match. That uh, Adam was not making it to appear. Yeah, you get man apparently. <laughs> um, Mark uh, also uh, Mayhem Miller says he's getting out of jail in sixty days. He said he wants to fight Coleman in celebrity boxing. He said he'll take the fight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why? Oh yeah! Hey, look, the guy. Look, God bless him. The guy's bored. He's been locked up for what two years now. Like, uh, you know what? I'd come out and be like, yeah, I'll light him. Fuck yeah! What do you want? I'll light him up. I'll do it. Fuck yeah! Oh, he, he's been he's been running he's been running the exercise classes and been um, teaching the transvestite uh, cheerleaders how to how to cheer you know? So he's he's pretty damn busy in there. <laughs> <laughs> he said he wants to fight Jake Shields and Coleman the same day. This is what he told me on the uh, on the, on, the, on the phone yesterday. Hey, listen, oh, you may no. get it at the same time, and I'll pay to see it. 
He's also betraying the dogs. He's in charge of the dog training at the prison. Um, and he's got like 20 dogs that he, I guess they put him in charge of the dogs and he's, he's, he's got a, he's part of the training program. I guess they train dogs. And well, hopefully if he escapes, he can call them off him as they release him to go find him. Cause that seems odd that they would let him train the, uh, dogs at the prison, but, um, <laughs> I don't know. I can't believe I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's training him to not track him down. <laughs> Remember, guys, if you smell this, you go right. the other way. Exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. Like, you guys don't want to talk about the Cody Garbrandt war that went on. Oh, the what did you think? Of, oh, yeah. What did you think of the Cody Garbrandt fight? Yeah, that guy went. He went. Well, I think the other guy. They said he had landed four strikes in the third round. Yeah. And his his corner kept yelling, "Be first, be first. And I was yelling like, "Be!" Like I just kept saying, "Like just anything, like just." Do just anything. be anything, be anything resembling something. So right. you're not a fan then, of Trevin uh, Five Star Jones? Five Star? Wait, what? What about Star Jones? That was Trevin Five Star Jones. That was Five Star. The member you Oh, uh, I thought you said something about Star Jones. I was like, she wasn't there. But no, no. She probably right. fought better. The best is that Cody Garbrandt like thinks he's back now. Like I heard him like saying, like, yeah, I'm back now. Like, dude, you didn't even you ran. The guy landed four strikes total and you ran and almost lost at the end. Like almost lost the fight. But he thinks he's back when he ran. But uh I can't wait for him to get another title shot so he can not try to lose the title. You know what I mean? Like not instead of win, he's gonna go out there and try to not lose. So I think uh, it was K shot. He's been knocked out four times in a row, five times in a row. He needed a win, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you could have. He, he, he needed to not get running. hit. Was what he needed. Yeah, I mean, um, and then they they filmed Roadhouse. Do you see that? Jay, yeah, I, yeah. Jake <laughs> Gyllenhaal. Do Jake Gyllenhaal apparently won the UFC championship uh, between rounds. So against, against Jay Haran. Yeah, talking about never throwing a punch. He never threw a punch. You know, he just walked in there, danced around, and then left. You know, shit. Did you did you watch the the uh, taping of that done? Um, what's that? Did you watch the taping of that? The the roadhouse taping? What's that? The roadhouse taping. Which yeah, you yeah. He just like you said. Yeah, he just walked in. He walked in, walked around. You know, waved his arms, and that was it. You know. <laughs> it looks like they did shoot some actual fight sequences at some point. Yeah. Of yeah. The, it may have been later they came back into the fight sequence. Not but during Cody did. Garbrandt's fight, they didn't. Hey, dude, I'm <laughs> Neither did Cody. <laughs> yeah. Jay Haran is a good friend of mine. And there's a guy that was like, you know, re re high school state champion. His parents, his, he was adopted state champion in high school. And then he went to college, was Phil Baroni's teammate. They almost got, he got kicked out for, for, for weed, for pesting positive for weed. He was selling coke. He was going to jail. He, he learned how to fight because he wanted to learn how to fight in prison. So I Baroni, can't believe someone hanging out with Phil Baroni <laughs> would do any of that. <laughs> if he was smart, he would have sold weed and done coke because it's out of your system a lot faster, and weed is almost just as profitable. So, so that Baroni basically taught him how to fight, and then he makes it to the UFC. He fights GSP. He uh, oh, he was he was going to jail for thirty years. His adopted parents put their house on the line. Uh, as you know, as bail, and then he ended up not doing time, and now here he is, and he 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 lost his last couple fights in the UFC and became an actor, and he now he's in movies with Jake Gyllenhaal. He was one with Denzel Washington, and he's a nice guy. His wife, this is Jake Ron, you're saying is in movies yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, he's a, he's a nice guy, man. He really yeah. is. His uh, his wife is an ass model. She's got he like is. she's got like the <laughs> nicest ass. I've ever seen like she just a, like a big. She told me she's like, I, "What do you do for a living?" She's like, "I'm I'm like an ass model." I'm uh, gonna need her Instagram <laughs> handle. <laughs> and Bruce Buffer's like, "I'll be the judge of that." <laughs> 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 so the fights this week we have Benson Henderson in Bellator, another secret card. Um, <laughs> Bellator is great because if you lose, no one knows about it because they didn't see That's you. That's right. Um, yep. He's fighting. It's like it never happened. <laughs> he's fighting Usman Nurmagomedov. Uh, I think it's Khabib's cousin or uh, against Ben Henderson. Aren't they all Khabib's cousin at this point? <laughs> like if you just go to Dagestan, you just all they're all Nurmagomedovs. I'm pretty sure. So Ben Henderson, uh, he's fighting uh, Litton Vassell, who's also a heavyweight black guy, nice guy from England. He's fighting Moldovsky. That's going to be a tough fight. 
MVP, Michael Venom Page. Is fighting, nice. Fighting Godi Yamauchi. Uh, so that's that's all on uh, the card. And then Ben. Where's he from? Ireland? Uh, Godi Yamauchi? No, he's from. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah right. Uh, I love that you're going to answer. I love that you were legitimately <laughs> going to answer that. You're so trusting. You're just too yeah. good. I, I, I was. I was so dis. I was so disappointed. Uh. <laughs> um, and then this week in the UFC, it is uh, Murab. Murab Zvashvili. He's a he's a guy who came over here. I think from Russia. He was living in Brooklyn. Uh, he had he was like almost borderline homeless. Went to a gym. He was a great wrestler and a great fighter back then. He had nowhere to go. Uh, and now he was at Matt Serra. He's fighting Peter Yan, who I thought beat Sean O'Malley. Um, and then he had he also got robbed against Aljo when Aljo said he was injured, he couldn't see, but then Aljo won the rematch. So it's Murrah versus Peter Yan in the main event. Uh, and now they're going to the Virgin Hotels. That's what that's where they're fighting now at the theater at the Virgin Hotels. I don't even know where, where is that. It's in Vegas, but I don't even. Know what it, yeah, it used to be the Hard Rock. Uh, if Don Fry goes so, there, it won't be called the Virgin anymore. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I was gonna say they're, they're gonna bring back that kid. Uh, what's his face? The the Karate Kid. The bring him back. It'll be the Donkey Show Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sage Northcutt, right? That's they're gonna have to bring back Sage Northcutt. Exactly. <laughs> Don, you say the Donkey Show Hotel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I, 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 I think the theater used to be the joint. Got it. That makes sense. Uh, who wins, Peter Yan or Murab Devashvili? Greg. I, I mean, listen. First of all, this finally a UFC fight night that's worth watching. I mean, I can't believe they got uh, that Peter Yan you know. is on a fight night. To yeah. me, that that to me, that's incredible, and I look forward to seeing him absolutely redeem himself. I think this Marab guy. I mean, he's yes, he's Russian, but so is Peter. I mean, I, I, I mean, Marab would just have to if if Marab wins this, it's because he's just hungrier. That's the only way. But he's I don't really know. He's Peter. really good, Greg. I've seen him. Like, I know, but Peter Yan down. is really great too, and he was also very hungry. And yeah. so I just, I, I mean, it might be an amazing. War of a fight, but I think Peter Yan. I would put my money on Peter Yan. Of course, I've, I've been really off lately, so you know. Don, who is right, Don? I, I gotta agree with him, man. I think Peter's mm -hmm. gonna win. I think it's gonna be a great fight. Probably gonna be close to Matt fight of the year, you know, because these right. two boys are gonna burn it up. They are, boy. I haven't seen the other guy fight, but I think Jan's the best 135 pounder in the UFC still, man. So um, I think uh, he beats anybody at 135 if he gets a fair judge uh, judging. The other him. guy doesn't get tired. I mean, he he trains with Aljo. Uh, I got Marab. Uh, also, Alexander Volkov's taking on Romanov. That's going to be a great fight. Ryan Spann versus Krylov. <laughs> they were supposed to fight two weeks ago, remember? And Krylov got hurt. So that got moved to this week. So that's nice. That's going to be great as well. Uh, Said Nurmagomedov. The nice part for those guys is they only had to cut weight twice in two weeks for the exact same amount of money. So that's uh, <laughs> uh Rafael Asensio is on the car. Oh, Sean, Green. rain on the parade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there's actually some, some really good fights. Uh, in bare knuckle boxing news, Mike Perry is fighting Luke Rockhold in bare knuckle boxing. Um, Jeez, that's actually sounds. I I gotta say, this is the first time I actually want to watch it. This is now that's a fight I want to see. Um, now Perry already said that uh, Rockhold's driving home in a body bag, which I, I, I don't know how you can drive. If yeah, you're yeah, gonna, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, he's gonna fly home on a donkey. Uh, a white, a white one, a Caucasian one, or a black one? Uh, 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 I don't know the body bag or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the body bag. I don't. I'm a, a little confused on that you, one. You're off today, aren't you, boy? I am. You're I'm off, dude. I'm off. off. I'm, I'm off. I got up at six o'clock in the morning. I fucking drive. I, you know, my kid. I take the kid to school, which I always do every day, but today especially. And then that I, you're in town. Yeah. Right. Thank. You. Thanks for. Of course, Greg. Appreciate that. Um, <laughs> just, listen, it, uh, as your wife's representative on the show, I just would like the audience to know. <laughs> I'm shocked that Mike Perry can even walk around with the size of his balls if he's willing to fight Luke Rockhold, who has to walk around at 225 pounds. I mean, like, I don't know. 
Mike Perry's yeah. not a big dude, man. And if he's fighting, I mean, he's easily 40 pounds lighter than. Mike Perry is. is not aware of what his size is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing about Mike Perry, like a little chihuahua. Well, the thing about it though is that the, usually the guy with the bare knuckle boxing experience usually wins because it really people think it's a boxing match when they go in there and it's a fucking hockey fight because you could clinch and all that stuff. So a lot of guys they go in there and they don't realize what they actually signed up for. Then their second fight, third fight, they look a lot better. Uh, that being said, like like Rocco's no dummy. I don't think he's gonna go toe to toe with Mike Perry. Mike Perry may have this the hardest chin in the history of the world. But you're right. He's probably about 40 pounds heavier. On the same card is going to be Chad Mendez versus Eddie Alvarez in bare knuckle boxing. So this is also going to be... Actually, where, where, which, where can we actually see this? Because I'm not joking when I say I actually want to see this. Um, let me see uh, when this is. Uh, and also, it says Ben Rothwell. It said also featuring Ben Rothwell, which somebody said sounds like like the, the worst mixtape ever. <laughs> 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 he's, gonna, he's fighting. Uh, you know, the worst thing is when someone's fighting TBA and you end up being TBA. Like you know, you're a bum when you're <laughs> TBA now. Like you aren't even on the card. You know. Like. So April 29th in uh, Colorado, Beck Rawlings, Rowdy Beck against Ferreira, who's the champion. This girl's a monster. Also featuring Ben Rothwell, Perry Rockhold, Mendez versus Alvarez. I don't know how they have this money. It's seven dollars a month for unlimited fights. Um, where I'll tell you what, man, it'll be interesting to see how much of the share of the lawsuit they have to pay when the CTE finally, like the lawyers finally work their way around to the UFC, because like the UFC is gonna pay a big chunk to you know fires with brain damage, but these places doing letting guys that are 50 years old fight bare knuckle, you know, after their UFC careers is is uh, they're going to probably be part of it if they're still in business, but I'm guessing not by then. So die, right, it'll be so completely bankrupted by then. And not right. only that, I mean these what the releases and the indem uh, can't holds, uh, you know, uh, you know, find unindemnifiable or whatever. They, you know, they, they I'm sure it's going to be very hard to get anything out of them. So they Don, know who, what they're getting. Don, into. who wins this card? Uh, Rockholder Perry and then Eddie Alvarez versus Chad Mendez. I like Rockhold, right? I'm a, I like I like watching Rockhold fight. Yeah, you know, he's a big, strong dude, and uh, like you said, he's going to have forty pounds on, on Perry, so that's going to make a hell of a difference. You know, we just stand there throwing punches, and um, I think uh, Mendez Mendez is going to pull this one through too. I think I think so, right? He looks good. And now, also, uh, Nick Diaz said he wants to come back. He's ready to come back. But he wants to fight Stylebender. Um, <laughs> what world do these guys live in, man? Shit. Look, I, I I love Nick Diaz. I just don't think the last performance he had against Robbie Lawler um, justifies making him versus Stylebender. That yeah. being said, with the current UFC, the way that they're doing things, I would not be shocked if they made Stylebender. You don't. Nick Diaz. I hate to say it, you're right, because it would sell tickets. And at the end of the day, that's all they give a fuck about. And, you know, so if he were to come back, they're, they'd probably, I could see them saying, yeah, you know what? You got it. But would, would Stylebender do it? Would he sign off on that? Yes, Does he have any say in it? Easiest fight. In the, I mean, he's fighting for, he's fighting the rematch next. Uh, so against the guy that if he loses the rematch, I would not be a bit surprised if UFC did that to Nick Diaz. You know, like that is uh, it'd be ridiculous if they did it, but that uh, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all if they did that. They uh, they love to use the old guys, man. To uh, they love to do that to the old guys and the new guys. Like when they called me and went off me a contract, I was like, I'm not interested in getting served up to one of your guys you're trying to build. You know, like one of your guys is already good. Like no, no, it would be a first time UFC fighter. And I'm like, okay, cool, but. Um, they love to do that to the old guys, man. Like let them be the stepping stone for the new younger monster. Like they try to do Nate with uh what's his name? Chamaya, you know? Oh my god, that right, a hundred percent. Now, did you guys watch the Chris Rock comedy special? Did uh -huh. watch it, yes, I did. I watched the last eight minutes. I think really after watching, I just had one question, and you guys would be way better qualified to answer than I would. But I was watching, I was thinking, okay, better special. This one he just let out, like just released, or gringo pop. <laughs> uh, I, thought it was a, I thought it was a great special i loved it i mean look it wasn't bring the pain 
but bring the pain <laughs> is the greatest comedy. I, I was going to say nothing will ever be bring the pain, you know, like, but this so. was angry vintage Chris rock. Yeah. Which I think is the funniest Chris rock when he's angry and doesn't give a fuck. Um, and I thought it was, I thought it was great. People were mad at it. They're mad at it, which is exactly what he said was going to happen in the special. All these people on Twitter, are like boycott Chris Rock, blah blah blah, and get rid of Chris Rock. I'm like, this is what he's talking about. It is yep. it's, it's selective outrage? A hundred percent, the selective outrage is what you guys are doing. I thought, it was, did you watch it, Sean? I watched about the first five minutes and the last eight because I just wanted to see what he said about Will Smith, really, because I wanted I heard that was great, like everything he said about Will Smith. But it, honestly, uh, you caught the best parts of it. Uh, the the thing about it was it did drag in the middle because at a certain point you're just like, okay, get to the Will Smith part. If I were him, I would have opened with the Will Smith stuff and then done a nice big callback to it at the end. Right, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like the audience was kind of waiting, like, okay, get to the well, stuff, you know, like there was no way to not be waiting for that, right? And you know, all, all, on an hour long journey, it just it kind of dragged a little bit in the middle. It started out like fire, man, lightning. And I feel like if he would just rearrange that a little bit, because the stuff in the middle did drag, unfortunately, but 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 overall, it was it was classic Chris Rock. I mean, and for the first 20 minutes, I was like, this is fucking fantastic. Then yeah. the middle 20 minutes, I was like, okay, we got to get where we're going. And then the final 20, I was like, all right, here we go. Back around, yeah. you yeah. know? And I feel like um, he was, they were like, he, when he stood out there for the applause break, I feel like he was milking it a little bit, like, like trying to be like, right. I got him. I got him. Like, like take it and maybe come back out. Like, you know, yeah. I, I I don't know. I felt like he, he it was a that was, but again, who am I to say? Otherwise, I thought overall an incredible special, great writing, brilliant delivery, tons of energy, great anger. It was the Chris Rock that 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 is the best Chris Rock. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, don't forget that first Bring the Pain special. People don't know this. I talked to Tony Rock about it. Was it was after he had just got on Saturday Night Live. He was he got fired for he left SNL for a living color to be the executive producer, season nine. They canceled that. He had all kinds of debt. He had to, he went on tour with Martin Lawrence. Martin was doing an hour and a half to open every show, blowing yeah. him out of the water. This was Martin Lawrence when he, people don't realize how big Martin Lawrence was. He had Martin, he had- Yeah, no, he was the biggest, yeah. And then Chris Rock was essentially getting booed off the stage, like like not being able to follow Martin. He went underground, and this was, this is from Tony Rock, who told me his brother said that was when he actually- realize how important each word is and not just kind of going out there and just, and then he came out and just guns and blazing came out with bring the pain. And that's, that happens a lot of times. I remember talking to Bill Burr. Uh, it was, I remember he got booed at in Vegas when they had that show, uh, that stupid show. What was it in that show? The guy, he had like little people and Beecher's Madhouse. Beecher's Madhouse. Um, I know I was the original host of it. And then uh, Bill Burr got booed off one day. Uh, because the crowd was just, you know, they wanted essentially Dane Cook and um, someone doing like a Dane Cook. And then a couple of weeks later was that they've been in, in, in uh, Philadelphia. So sometimes yeah. it's like it's like that biggest hit is what makes the biggest comeback. Um, Sean, do you feel did anything ever happen to you in your life where you fell down and came back hard? Yeah, and I just fell harder. Like it seems like in my life, like just like. Right. Uh, you know, it's so funny because uh, when I was, uh, I had lost everything. You guys know my whole story, but I had gotten divorced. My ex-wife was sneaky, snuck around, stole all my money, like got everything foreclosed on. I had went from being a millionaire at 28 years old, retired for the rest of my life to having $300 when I was 32, like having nothing. But uh, when I got the UFC contract, I was like, look, God brought along something else to ruin for me. So, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, I was talking to the, they had, sure dog had predicted I would lose in the first minute of the first round. And so I called the guy. I was one of the first people, if you guys probably don't know that, to start talking trash to media members on Twitter, like back to them and critiquing how they do their job and what they look like physically and things of that nature. So uh, I started going off on this guy on sure dog and then he went to have me on his show. So one of the last things, he went from a 10 minute segment, we talked for an hour and a half. He goes, why are you so confident you're going to win? I said, because I'm going to commit suicide if I don't. So those are my options. I said, like, if God brought one, I wasn't being serious, but I was like, if God brought one more thing into my life just to take away from me, then I'm done. You know, I said, so I don't, uh, you know, like, I'm not uh, not going to keep doing this. And so I really was like, I, I figured I had nothing to lose. Like, nothing got worse than my previous two years before I fought. But it. Um, well, you know what? I think someone needs to tell Cyril Gahn that, um, to take that approach. 
You know, dude, I, these guys like Don, I don't understand. I've never understood. I guarantee you, Don doesn't understand. If you're going to lose anyway, why not go for it? Like, just throw some punches. Like, the chances are John Jones is going to beat you like nine out of 10 times. Why not come out swinging and just see what happens? You know what I mean? Like, why, instead of yeah. just slowly yeah. waiting for the inevitable, you know, like, I just, I don't get it, man. Don, yeah, you ever, it was Don, you, ever go to a fight, you ever go to a fight thinking that you were going to lose? You might as well go out swinging. Oh, yeah. Of course, of course, you know, uh, the, the fight against uh, the batter, you know, I knew I wasn't going to, didn't have a chance, you know, and my fault, you know, I didn't train for it. So, uh, sat on the back porch and drank whiskey and, or drink tequila and smoke cigars, you know, for eight weeks. And, uh, <laughs> and just so one of the greatest kickboxers so in the history. <laughs> he, yeah, yeah. In kickboxing. Talking about dumb. <laughs> Dude, and, and, and like the pre-fight, he goes, I've never even thrown a kick before, and I'm going to beat this guy. He put the number one kickboxer without ever throwing a kick. <laughs> well, in MMA, Don would have killed him, but kickboxing, that's a whole different story when you're fighting a K-1 champion. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don, well, Don, well, it was supposed to be a rematch. There, there was supposed to be the rematch in MMA rules. But of course, you know, you – uh, Saka Kamaro being the piece of shit he is, lied about that too, you know. Yeah, if you ever talk to him, let him know he still owes me thirty thousand dollars too. So that'd be nice to get that. Well, he owes me a lot more than that. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Soccer. Now, now, Don, when you were in Vegas, were a lot of girls hitting on you this week? Oh, constantly, man, constantly. It was unbelievable. I was just like, I'm just, you know, just. I can't do these girls, and they, they, they have no limits, you know. They just all grab me and groping me, you know. Jeez. It's like, you know, go home and pay some attention to your old man. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. By the way, that girl that you were doing an interview with, that girl Caroline, is a she's beautiful. That girl, you with yeah. that, the British chick. She is. She's beautiful. She's beautiful, and she's funny and smart, too, you know. She's got her shit together. She really does. But, you know, what's sad is her boyfriend, her fiancé, is more beautiful than she is, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that is sad. There's no way he's more beautiful than you, Don Fry. No fucking way. Listen, guys, I got to go. Love you guys. I'll uh, be in Vegas at the L.A. Comedy Club at the Strat, March 13th to the 18th. I love you guys. Have a great rest of the show, okay? Hey, man. Hey, bro. Bye-bye. So was there any sexual tension, Don, between you and, you and that girl? Oh, I'm sure there was on her part. Yeah, yeah. I mean, can you blame her? <laughs> no, I did a show when she was in the crowd, and it was uh, they hired me for the UFC gym Christmas party, and it was Matt Hughes and uh, BJ Penn in the front row, and I was like, "Oh, Matt, I, I didn't recognize you without BJ's nuts in your mouth." And then I went off on Matt fucking his sister for five minutes, <laughs> like all this shit. He wrote me the funniest text Matt Hughes did. He goes, normally someone tells me that I'm a I'm an inbred with BJ Penn balls in my mouth. <laughs> but he goes, but you made me laugh. And he was a really good sport, Matt Hughes, about it. But she was there, too. And, uh, she, you know, wearing like she's one of these girls that has like a body like out of a fucking fitness magazine and isn't afraid to let you know it. So. But uh it is what it is. Yeah. I bet that's really distracting for Bruce Buffer to pretend like he's looking at her at the event. appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> now, does Bruce have fake abs? <laughs> it seems like him and him and De La Hoya had that same ab treatment. Have you seen it? They're, they're him and De La Hoya share a lot of things no. in common, from what I've heard. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Yeah. By the way, if Bruce Buffer is gay. I'm sure they share a lot. We don't know if he's gay, but if he is, there's nothing wrong with it. Sean is just a fucking 14 year old who thinks that it's funny to make gay jokes for hours on end to people who have no idea we're making gay jokes about them. Uh, the, 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 yeah. It, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, uh, you know, I, I was going to tell you, I tried to say earlier and I got off track. I forgot. I was thinking, I said that uh, Cody Barway was saying, like, during his pre fight interviews, that the, 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 the fight has already been decided, like, everything happens for a reason, as if he, you know, I, I mean, I guess it probably was already decided the way the guy only threw four punches. Maybe James Krause was in on that one, too. But uh, I was thinking he was right. Like, everything happens for a reason. Like, uh, Dominic Cruz tries to have sex with guys, and the reason is because he's gay. He doesn't. Like, things, do, Dominic Cruz, things do happen for a reason. <laughs> for the last time, I have seen him with the hottest woman in the world, Dominic yeah. Cruz. I saw Mick Jagger with a hot chick one time, too. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> Meanwhile, I heard he almost got into a fight, Dominic Cruz, in like the locker room or something. Uh, yeah. With it was, a, uh, it was a small altercation, <laughs> just a little. <laughs> Little, uh, this became a dominant cruise <laughs> roast. Why is this a cruise roast? <laughs> the fuck did dominant cruise ever do? That dude's a dick, man. Uh, I know. I know somebody. I don't want to say her name. She is uh, actually a big deal out there. You probably would know her because you're both Jewish. But she's a big deal out in this casting out in Hollywood. She's a huge UFC fan, and uh, she uh, she sent me a, a video one time or a picture of her and Dominic Cruz, and she said, "Look, I'm sitting next to on the plane." I was like, does he have like a booster seat that he sits in or whatever? She's like, no, yeah. but he's a real dickhead. And I was like, uh, like even her, this girl, I'm sure he didn't know who she was because she casts for the big shows out there, like a bunch of them, you know. Um, I'll text you her name later, but she's a big shot in Hollywood. And uh, yeah, she didn't, I guess he didn't know he's been a dick to her the whole time, probably because she's taller than him. But oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, how you doing, man? How are you feeling? Uh, terrible, but I'm actually going to, uh, <laughs> oh God, if you only knew, I, I'm going to go get an MRI Friday. Um, and they were actually asking me today if I thought I would fit an MRI machine. I was like, no, but I have to do it. So, and they're like, well, we don't think you should come if you don't think you're going to fit, you know, with your size or whatever. And uh, you're claustrophobic. You have anything to take? I said, I can get something. And she goes, oh, from your doctor? I said, no, but I can still get something to take before. I said, that's no problem. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go get an MRI and hopefully go to the Mayo Clinic sometime next month. I'm hoping up in Minneapolis, man. And they'll probably tell me there's nothing they can do like everybody else does. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. My, I just got an X-ray because they wanted to waste my time. They said they could schedule me for a consult if I sent them an X-ray or an MRI that had been done in the last six months. So I go get an X-ray because my insurance didn't want to pay for an MRI. So I go get an X-ray. And then they said, oh, no, it has to be an MRI after I went and wasted doing that. You know, So my doctor, who I've been seeing forever, hits me up today and calls me and goes, you know, I got your x-ray results back. Uh, you you have this degenerative like spine and this and facet joints with covered arthritis. Like your back is terrible. And I was like, what have I been telling you for the past nine years? Like what? Like it's like, she, yeah. you know what I mean? Like she was yeah. like, I, I cannot believe these results. Like you have arthritis all over your spine everywhere. I said, I, yeah, I know. Like, I, the, like what, what I went to Germany twice. You know what I mean? Like, what do you think? I, I was just making it up, you know, like it's uh, but they, they always act shocked when you're, when you're right, you know? So and Don, Don, what do you got coming up? I think Don just passed out. That's an interesting story. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just I have a, hopefully have some more um E and whiskey shows with Caroline, you know. Um yes, I hope I hope he liked it. I hope everybody did you get to see it? I did. And you were hilarious, dude. Honestly, like it was my, I'm telling you, my whole Twitter feed was Don Fry is back. Don Fry is hilarious. Don Fry is this. Don Fry. It was like, I'm, I'm happy you're finally getting some of the, the accolades cool. that you deserve, man. Uh, cause you know, thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad I got a job. Shit. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure those residual yeah, checks. She's, she's from... easy to work with. She's your old... Yeah. She's super cool. Uh, March 23rd to the What's that? Oh, I just I said I'm sure you're gonna get some of your residual checks from when they show your fights on TV. Like I, I'm the only person apparently in the world that knows when I see my one of my fights on TV, I should be getting paid like a residual. You know what I mean, or whatever. Like other fighters, like wait, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah. every right. time Star Trek right. is on, William Shatner gets a check. Like it's you know what I mean. Like it's every. Yeah. I, never, uh, I had to buy my own DVD from the UFC. I asked if I get a copy of the DVD. They were like, yep, but Best Buy on the fight I co-main evented. So uh, dude, I was uh, I was uh I was at a hotel. I was at a hotel one time and they had a fucking poster of me. But because my name is Adam Greenberg and not Adam Hunter, they they didn't have me under Adam Hunter. And I'm I'm standing next to the poster. Like it's like five feet away from the guy. I'm like, look, this is me. And the guy said, We can't check you in. <laughs> fucking wait in the lobby for five hours. Like a fucking person. <laughs> the guy, the guy called uh Dude, what I do now is like whenever I, I like go to a place, I always go like the night before because I'm always worried that the flight's gonna get whatever. And then I get in at nine o'clock in the morning, and there's never a room ever. Yeah. So I just never. sit in the lobby and have fake phone calls of like, right. what? He has herpes, and then like just <laughs> just fucking just be like, you think it's AIDS? And then all of a sudden, a fucking like a room opens up in three seconds. It's it, it just because they don't want me, you know, annoying everybody. <laughs> so March twenty third. <laughs> I'll be in Minnesota at the House of Comedy March 30th to April 2nd. I'll be in Vancouver at the House of Comedy. 
You guys are awesome. Have a great week, guys. Love you guys. See you guys. Take care.